In the part of the office where I sit, there are a lot of arguments. I don't care what you say, pineapple belongs on pizza. Oh, real mature. It could be about YouTubers. Mr. Beast is the greatest YouTuber of all time, I swear. Or if I get involved, it's about the iPad. Mac OS doesn't belong on the iPad. Boom! And Apple doesn't even help me make my case. Thanks to the inclusion of the M2 processor on the brand new iPad Pro, there's technically no reason why it can't run Mac OS, especially when docked to a magic keyboard or USB-C hub. Exactly, I just want one device for everything. Yeah, th th that's what I was trying to tell you. But guys, alongside the new hardware, Apple announced that DaVinci Resolve would be coming to the device. If Blackmagic thinks that its professional grade video editing suite is good enough for iPad OS, then maybe I'm right. And to find out, I'm going to edit a whole video on this iPad. Spoiler though, I wasn't entirely right. Back when I tried the M1 iPad Pro, I had many gripes about its capability at the time. It couldn't play ProRes video, file management was annoying, and nothing could fully utilize its impressive processor and display. Since then, iPadOS has changed by so much, I'm actually quite surprised how far it's come. And some of the decisions, like putting a powerful PC processor in here, makes more sense. In professional circles, DaVinci Resolve is best known for its capabilities as a color grading application to help transform the look of footage. For the rest of us, the free version of the desktop app is an incredibly powerful video editor for those who want to get into it. Editing on a computer with a big screen and mouse has obvious benefits. The large canvas and precise controls are essential for translating a creative vision into a finished product. So with only a finger and tiny screen, how does that work on the iPad? It's a good question, and it's why on first launch, DaVinci presents you with the cut and color pages, as opposed to the seven pages available on the desktop app. If you're used to a traditional timeline, the cut page has a bit of a learning curve, but after a couple of days, I appreciate why they did it this way, especially on this screen. I was still surprised by how much I enjoyed video editing on the iPad. Yes, it is slower. Don't expect to see edited on iPad in Apple's next keynote. But for short social videos, rough storylines, and quick news stories, it's not only possible, it's even kind of fun. There's this delightful satisfaction to scrubbing and moving clips around with one finger. However, if I had to choose between my finger or the pencil, I'd use the pencil. It's particularly great on the new iPad Pro because DaVinci Resolve takes advantage of the new hover feature. I was initially skeptical about hover. I mean, it's just based off mouse over, right? But in the real world, it feels like much more than that. It adds a magical new layer of interactivity to the interface that just makes sense. So as the tip of the pencil hovers over a button element, it comes to life. And when it grazes over a video clip in the media window, it scrubs through it. Wow, this is so cool. I have to show Ed. Hey, Ed. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm actually going to set up the iPad in the color booth. What? You're going to set up an iPad as a computer here, like right now? Yeah. I'm speechless, let's go. It turns out that Ed is so convinced by DaVinci on the iPad that he wants to actually set one up in the color correction booth here at Linus Media Group. Oh, so it's going in here. Okay, so I have to ask, is it because DaVinci's now available on the iPad that's why you want to deploy here? That was the biggest reason, yeah. I mean, like the screen's fantastic and our normal systems are expensive, so this being like under 2000 Will we need this anymore? No. Okay, I'll take that out. Will we need this anymore? No, that doesn't work either. W will we need this? Uh, nope, we have an Apple Pencil, well, right? I like clean the whole desk. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of all you need. What have you learned in your time playing around with DaVinci on there? I've learned that the touch interface is fantastic, especially with uh, a pencil. You know, adjusting the curves or using the wheels. It's just a lot more intuitive than like using a mouse. What's this? So I found all the stands that are out there for the iPad. You kind of put it like over there and then your keyboard's here. And if you want to use a pencil, you're, you're reaching over. Yeah. So I made this thing so that it puts the uh, iPad over your keyboard so that the distance between your keyboard hand and the pencil hand, relatively oh, the that's same. Awesome. It appears that even here in the pc of PC land, the iPad is getting a plinth to celebrate its status as a fully capable computer. 
I wasn't expecting this, but even Ed thinks that there is merit to keeping the macOS interface off the iPad. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah, that works. Ha. <laughs> how does this change sort of the way you, you grade compared to how you did it in the past? Uh, in terms of ergonomics, it's just a lot better. It's a lot com more comfortable, natural feeling. With this thing, you have to click on a thing and then your, your whole arm is under tension while you're moving it, right? Yeah. Whereas this thing, I'm just like, Bleh! Would you say that this is an example of an application where the way the iPad is, it actually is better not being a PC? Certain features, like, like all of these, they're fantastic. It's so like, touchscreen is just better. So if you were to just if you were just using it for color, like you want to do, then this is actually yeah, this actually fantastic. works out. This actually helps my argument, right? It does. Yes. Yes. And if you notice, not once has Ed mentioned that it should have Mac OS. Yes, we're getting back to that. But before I do, let me tell you about this video sponsor, Squarespace. Can you really rely on social media anymore? What about taking control of your online presence by making a website on Squarespace? Ah yes, like the better days of the internet. They've got everything you need to get started. Templates for business, blog or portfolio pages, marketing tools if you want to take the next step and build your business, and 24-7 support. Instagram wouldn't give me any help when my account got hacked. So give Squarespace a try by going to squarespace.com slash Mac address and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Even without macOS, it turns out that you can access what appears to be most of the functions found in the desktop DaVinci Resolve by messing around with these keyboard shortcuts. You can get all the pages, except deliver, and even audio syncing tools. It's like there's a whole app hidden under here. Well, almost. Playing around with some of the functions, it's clear that we weren't really intended to be turning any of these dials. So let's get back to using DaVinci as it was intended with my project. It turns out that editing a full MAC address video on the iPad is a lot harder than I thought. Production environments like ours use expensive cameras, microphones, and audio recorders that need to be synced together. It's already chaotic on a computer, and given the audio sync function isn't a menu option, it just wasn't possible. Okay, so I may have been a little too ambitious with this project. So I pivoted to editing a YouTube short I shot with an iPhone. I actually think this is a truly excellent use case for video editing on the iPad. Though the layout of DaVinci Resolve isn't optimized for vertical video, so we end up with all this wasted space. Space that already comes at such a premium that Blackmagic couldn't afford to put labels on many of the interface icons, so there's no quick way to figure out what they do. This was a bit of a problem. On a Mac, you can just hover the mouse over a button and a tooltip should pop up explaining its function. That would be a great use of the pencil's hover feature. I should confess that Ed's iPad setup isn't entirely perfect either. He can output a full screen HDR feed to the external monitor, but if he switches apps or pulls down the notification drop down, it resets the output to no longer be HDR. <laughs> oh no, what was that thing? Outside of DaVinci, dealing with files on the iPad is still a pain point. Even just to edit, you'll either need to pay for lots of storage built in or be willing to deal with an SSD dangling off your single precious Thunderbolt port. Editing off a Wi-Fi network drive is possible, but the network speeds aren't fast enough for the professional file formats that DaVinci supports. And then if you want to copy those files off the network drive, you'll be blind finding them. For my project, I needed to find an old clip, and the file browsing unfortunately isn't available within DaVinci, so I have to use the Files app. In the icon view, thumbnails don't populate for video clips on network drives. Perhaps it appears that some of the arguments for macOS on the iPad remain. I'd have no problem seeing thumbnails for these video clips in Finder. Or better yet, I could simply use Desktop DaVinci's fully featured media page. But would we get the clever hover effect on the pencil, and would it not be hard to use on the 11-inch form factor? There are things that make macOS good for certain tasks, but if we have the imagination to think of them, there are things that could make the iPad more portable, more intimate, and maybe even just better than macOS. And if Apple caves and puts macOS on the iPad, we might never see them come to fruition. I can see why people are getting impatient. Apple has been bringing both the capabilities and pricing of their Pro models closer to the Macs. So it's frustrating to be asked to pay for potential that maybe will be realized two years from now. Maybe. 
Along with video editing, I tried the new stage manager on an external display. It's much better than I remember, but still odd and glitchy. I wrote and edited this whole script in Word with a magic keyboard and still encountered maddening issues like a delay when moving the cursor and unpredictable scrolling speeds when attempting to select multiple paragraphs of text. I'm beginning to realize that most of my frustrations using the iPad come when I'm trying to use it like a Mac. But I still believe that putting Mac OS on here is the wrong solution. As I keep trying to tell my colleagues, that would come at the expense of how the hardware gets used. The tablet would be best docked, not undocked, and that would kill the whole idea of the iPad. I'm not saying it's perfect. iOS and now iPad OS is by Apple's own admission in a court of law restricted to be the car kids can drive. I think it goes a little too far in weird ways. File management doesn't need to be this difficult. And Apple's controlling tendencies can make it hard for developers to make the most of the platform. All this has hampered the pace of innovation and possibility for the iPad because developers, already skeptical of the tablet form factor, aren't going to invest in creating new uses for this device when there's a gatekeeper controlling more than what they feel is reasonable. And so we're here, waiting to see who's gonna invest in new use cases for this device. And it looks like it's been Apple the whole time, and they're taking their time. Oh yeah, the video. Well, you may have already seen the short I made on the iPad. It's the one where I plug in a bunch of monitors into an M2 MacBook. Turned out pretty good, I think. I wanted to try editing on an iPad, and it's neat. And let's keep it that way and keep exploring how these fresh ideas can work elsewhere. I might not have convinced you, but some people are clearly responding to Apple's strategy of keeping the iPad iPad. I keep meeting people who don't want it to be a Mac and talk about switching to the iPad on its merits. Hopefully in due time, there are more merits to be uncovered and I'll make believers out of all of you. Thanks for editing this Mac address with only a finger. If you disagree with me and think that Mac OS should be in the iPad, give this video a like. And if you think the future of the iPad is in video editing, well, you might as well subscribe. Now, I'm curious in the comments what you think the next app that the iPad should adopt to really bring its capability up. We've got video editing. What else?